Okay, now our topic today is your speaking skills enhancement where I discuss all the things you need to know about the speaking subtest in general as an overview as a whole and of course how we can acquire certain skills to improve our speaking prowess. And of course, once the acquisition of those skills occur, we will be enhancing them to its full potential. So we shall begin. Now, just by focusing here with the image for my first slide. So most of you guys already know who this is. If you guys don't know yet, this character is known as Goofy, one of Mickey Mouse's uh, side characters. Um, Goofy is known to goof around. Kaya Goofy, it's a really fun character. But most importantly, Goofy is known because of his incomprehensible speech. And most importantly, upon looking at Goofy's picture right here, Goofy does not know what he will say. And that is the main focus of our speaking skills announcement today. We want to remove the aspects that could affect our degree of apprehension that could ultimately lead to not being able to speak due to certain instances. Let's say you're nervous or you don't know what to say at all because you don't have an idea about the topic. So that is our main target. Now, our learning objectives today includes to be able to organize your speech and answers in the IELTS speaking examination, to be able to come up with an effective answer to questions asked in the speaking subtest, and to be able to practice how to become a better speaker. So we will learn how to properly organize the arrangement of your ideas, thoughts, so that they could be more cohesive they would be more responsive in the fluency category of your speech. Now, there are certain answers which are question appropriate. So what we want to avoid is that whether my response is not accurately approaching the question properly. Then we want to also practice how to become a better speaker through speaking coaching session. So I have just recently attended the symposium master's class conducted by IDP via Zoom. I have uh, trained myself yearly and attending seminars about this. What the examiners who were the speakers during those symposiums and seminars highlight is that whenever we practice the skills needed to improve our speaking skills. We must focus on the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay, so what is this one-on-one -on -one coaching anyway? So this one-on-one -on -one coaching, you will have a speaking partner, which mostly myself. I will be your speaking partner. Great, all right. Now, I will pretend that I am your examiner and will ask you the same questions asked in the speaking examination. Now afterwards, you will be answering the questions that I'm going to ask you. So we will be following the exact flow of the speaking test with your part one, two, and three, respectively. So we will be discussing that a lot. Now after the one-on-one -on -one coaching, I will be providing you with my feedback, like, Based on examiner's set of standards, what score could you probably get between 0 to 9? Influency, vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation. So at the very beginning, at least, we would expect ourselves not to perform as easily as what we expected it to, to be. Because the tendency is we are just introducing ourselves to an entity that we are not yet familiar with. So definitely, you don't have that much expertise in the field yet. So you have to allow yourself to practice more. So if you will be getting low band scores at the beginning, that's fine. I don't have to worry about it, trust me. But 
if you will not be moving from that point on after quite so many practices, then there are obvious problems that we might be overlooking. So something that we should really work out, work out on. And some of those problems will be discussed in the common mistakes in the IELTS, which a topic that I've already covered via our Zoom meeting recently. We're also going to do a content speaking, which is, again, was actually tapos na. So this is speaking skills enhancement for me is the most important lecture of all. Yeah, because it covers everything. It covers the substance, it covers the content, it covers the errors, it covers exactly how you should deal with the different types of questions in different categories. Diba? So, as an overview, the speaking subtest is also known as the isolated test because this is separated from your listening, reading, writing. Truth is, listening, reading, writing in the Philippines happen on a Saturday mostly, but not all of the time. And then, after noon, pwede natin expect that si speaking could occur before. But if you're going to listen to this recording and you're a candidate who will be taking the examinations abroad, there's a high probability that the examination would happen on the same day. So listening, reading, writing in the morning, speaking in the afternoon, which is, if you ask me, quite exhausting and physically, mentally draining. But for me, it's convenient because it's just one day. Because in the Philippines, you know, the actual, the ideal, because you book a hotel for three days, so it's a bit of So that's the thing. It has both the pros and cons, if it's a separate day or if it's same day. Um, this is the shortest test among the four components of the IELTS. So this will actually last for 10 to 15 minutes. We shouldn't expect any more than that. So sir, my examination actually occurred only for, I don't know, nine minutes? Should I be happy about it? Actually, you shouldn't. Because the thing is, when your examination is cut short, it means that it's either you were not able to supply the examiner with enough detail and information, or it's either the examiner is not interested in how you cover the topics. So it would result to a drastic failure. So we don't want that to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to the length of time, and your, your examination actually was extended, let's say 16, 17 minutes, that's the time that you should be happy. Examiner, the examiner that you encountered is very interested in you. Marami siyang gustong tanawin sa'yo. That's the reason why. Ang dami niyang tinanong. You should be happy that this is an opportunity for you to provide more information. And if you would satisfy all the aspects of the requirement ng standards niya, then there is a higher, even higher chance na mas mataas makuha mo na score compared dun sa iba. Okay, and this is important for nurses. Naturally, all right, because most nurses require a band seven in speaking. If you're applying for the UK, if you're applying in the US, you guys need to get seven. So also, pati din sa naga apply as a student, kailangan din mataas ang ating band score. But most importantly, you should know the importance of um, the speaking examination, all the pieces and bits of it so that you may be able to increase your chances of getting high band scores. So, how will you be assessed? Well, your examiner will be the one who will assess you initially. Yeah, yung kausap mo, habang nag-uusap kayo, meron ka ng score. The wrong, the most uh, improper thing that you could possibly do is to ask the examiner about your score. Never, ever do that. Okay, because examiners could lose their job and it seems very disrespectful if you do that. So never, never ask them about your score after the exam is over. So the first assessment is fluency and content. Some might say fluency and cohesion. Actually, I prefer to call it fluency and cohesion because it's much better to understand it that way. So these are the things that examiners would ask once the speaking exam begins. Like, can this person handle himself or herself professionally? So when it comes to handling yourself professionally, it involves, all right, your sitting position. It includes how you get dressed. It also includes how your facial expression 
is light that can convince the examiner that you are a confident, a trustworthy, and a candidate that is really interesting to talk to. Kasama yan. So kung nakabuka ka ka, nakadikwatro ka, di ba? At masado nakatas yung ulo mo. So it, it doesn't look professional. So sir, pati pala appearance. Yes. Di ba? Females wear light makeup. Di ba? Wag naman yung naka eyeliner ka pa. Diyos ko, te, ano to? Got lang. Di ba? Nung rakista ka, no? Alright. So, sir, ano pong dapat isuot? Magagawan po ba? Ako, just, ano to? Dibo mo? Di ba? So, you don't wear ex- excessive uh, or masyadong voluptus na mga clothings. Mas okay suotin is mga light colored na, na tops. Perhaps a dress shirt. Both females and males ito, na? No? Dress shirt is polo. Kasi pag sabi natin polo, that's a brand, eh. So, that's a, that's improper for vocabulary. So, we, we're going to call it dress shirt from now. Yung mga dibutones, ano? Pwede rin basta anything colored. Okay? Mas mukha kasing professional kapag ganun. Tapos, yung buhok, wag masyado siya nakasampay sa mukha. Because it's difficult talking to someone na you can see, you can't see the face entirely. So, don't do that again. Um, that's mostly it. Okay? Sa pambaba, syempre, slacks. Okay? Close shoes. Pero mga rubber shoes, walang problema. But I suggest everyone to bring something to cover you up, like a blazer, a cardigan, or a jacket, perhaps. Well, it's because napakalamig po sa testing center. Now, a, a problem that would occur here is that the examination now requires both the examiner and the candidate to wear masks. Again, this is extremely difficult because yung facial expression, hindi natin siya maia apply masyado. And there's a probability na baka mas tumaas yung instances ng misunderstanding and clarifications na madalas ka magpa-clarify ng question. It could get annoying, but when it comes to standards, um, you have to speak more strongly than usual because you will be wearing masks, unfortunately, because of what we're facing right now. So, will the person be able to relate to different types of conversation? Or if the person is only limited to simple types of conversation? So, you have to shift from one different type of speech to the next easily without that much difficulty. If you are using fillers like, um, you know, uh, well, yeah, cuz, mm, diba? So, if you are using that between every other sentence, the fluency of your speech plummets. Now, most of my speeches also use, um, but why... That speech isn't the same as our speech. Well, because I'm using um just once. That's my leverage. Para siyang launcher. Like before I launch myself sa isang pool, meron akong parang diving board. So yung um, tas pitek, tas talong ka na, tas swim ka na. So dire-diretso na siya afterwards. Ang problema natin kay um and ah, is nagiging failure siya in between the words. Like, um, my name is uh, uh, Kevin. And it's um, a pleasure to meet you. So if you do that, every other word, your speech is less convincing than this. Um, Hi, my name is Kevin Mangalabnan. Please call me Kevin for short. It's a pleasure to meet you, Sir Examiner. Mm. Diba? So, mas smoother siya. Although I use one um, hindi na siya na ulit. Yun yung tinatawag na launcher. But if you can help it, if hindi mo siya talaga maipapronounce uh, for the entire test, that's actually better. That's actually the target. That's actually the goal. To minimize and to completely eradicate the use of your um and ah. If you can just like keep quiet for a bit. Yeah, we use pauses. We use pauses strategically to convey our thoughts even more effectively in the speech. So it's better to use it that way. Uh, when the person relates ideas together, are they coherent or are there some misunderstanding? Like, Kevin, do you have your most favorite family member? Yes. I like to spend time with my family because it makes me happy, especially during the weekend when we watch our favorite TV shows and when we eat dinner together at night. So my heart is full knowing that I am born and raised in a very adventurous and loving family. Okay, maganda. Vocab, grammar, pronunciation. Very good ka te. Wow, boom, boom, boom. All right, bang. But, ano problema? Eh, ang tanong eh, favorite family member. So you should mention a person and describe this person why that person is your favorite family. It could be your dad, your mom. So, ang naging problema, the candidate attempted, alright, 
to respond to a question that he or she does not fully understand yet. And that's where the problem occurs. So, sir, what if I didn't hear the question right? What am I going to do? You can ask the examiner to repeat it. Like, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Examiner, but could you please repeat the question? Uh, would you mind repeating it again? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but in the, in the, in this particular instance, you have to be polite. You say, ah, come again. Ah, uh, pardon. Ah, uh, all right. So you don't do that. You have to, I'm sorry. I wasn't able to hear it. Could you please repeat the question? Mm. Diba? I'm, I'm sorry. Can, would you mind repeating it again? So kailangan mo siyang maging polite. Just mag thank you ka. Thank you. Yeah. That's uh, what examiners want to hear from candidates like you. And that's what we are going to attempt and deliver to them all the time. Grammar is the ability of the person to utilize the grammar of the language. Tulad dung topic natin just previously, the subject verb agreement for grammar 2, the tenses for grammar 3. So, included in po ang grammar dito kay speaking. But unlike writing, mas madali ang rating natin kay grammar because we don't have spelling here. We don't have capitalization rules. We don't have punctuation usage. But mostly, ang challenge yan is kung paano mo ipronounce yung mga past form. Like yung earned, learned, di ba? Ticked. Picked. So how are you going to produce the sounds more effectively with the past tenses of the verb? So you have to make sure that you are going to do them right. Can you speak in complete and accurate sentences considering the elements of grammar? So in every response that you're going to mention, they must be in full sentences. Di siya pwedeng, what is your favorite color? Ah, uh, red. Yeah. Dapat buo. The color that I like the most is red. Ayan. Kailangan buo po lahat ng ating mga pangungusap. Okay. Vocab and lexical resource is the vocabulary appropriate. So, sir, anong types po ba ng vocab ang appropriate at inappropriate? Now, although the speaking test is a semi-formal, meaning we could go more, or less semi-formal, pwede ka mag-informal, pwede ka mag-casual, it doesn't matter. Pero ang level ng vocab dito is I want you to picture two friends, even ikaw yung isang friend, whom you haven't seen each other for a long time, and you're just asking, inquiring out how each one of you is doing right now. Like, nagkamustahan kayo. So, ganun lang dapat yung level. Friendly ang vocab. So, ngayon, kung gagamitin ko ba ang word na gargantuan o yumongus, sa paggamit ng, instead ang gagamit ako ng big. Kasi sabi mo, sir, ang big, masyado siyang common sa writing. Eh, gusto ko maging medyo kakaiba. No, hindi tayo masyado mag-focus uh, dito kay vocabulary because if you are going to let vocabulary control you, the tendency is, baka impressive man yung words na maproduce mo, pero hindi naman impressive yung production niya, hindi naman impressive yung delivery niya. Patay pa din. Alright. So, you have to adjust. Alright? So, hindi naman siya dapat everyday common word na good, bad, happy, sad. Pero, yeah, beneficial. Pero magagamit ng mga gargantuan, uh, vexation, mga ganyan. Magagamit ng mga quintessential, bucolic. Yeah? So, sir, what about the use of my connecting devices? What about the use of however in addition to that? Well, yung in addition to that, medyo less friendly siya compared sa also, but, at saka to. So, I suggest that you use the more common conjunctions than using a, what we call, um, discourse marker na ginagamit sa writing. Kasi magkaiba yan eh. Yung coordinating conjunction, mga fanboys, for and nor, but, or yet so, pang connect yan ng mga sentences. Sama mo si while followed by, specially, and also to. Pero dito kay subordinating conjunction, mga however, furthermore, medyo limit ang paggamit niyan dyan. Mas okay na, actually, hindi mo siya ma-mention eh, yung mga ganong words. It's better. Does the person use Philippine English? So, yan, polo, di ba? So, polo is a Philippine English. Dress shirt. So, itatakil natin yan sa vocabulary to the common incorrect expressions in English. So, hang on tight. Di-discuss natin yan soon. Does this person have the tendency to translate Filipino to English? If you translate your word, word for word, into an English sentence, yung complete thought ng sentence mawawala. Kaya nga ang gusto natin, when you want to speak in English, you don't choose word, 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 word in Tagalog and then English, 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 isa-isa. Kasi mag-mauutal-utal ka dyan. 
At yung pinakaibig sabihin niya, hindi siya accurate. Mawawala yung pinaka-full context niya. And again, this is the most important part of your speaking test. Now, I'm going to ask myself a question. Kevin, where do you live? Nasabi ko sa'yo, ito yung 9 sa fluency, vocab, grammar, perfect kasi siya. I'm currently residing in Cabaretuan City, Nueva even though it is not the capital city of my province anymore. It's still a center for business where many establishments and shops can be found. Okay, perfect. Vocab, grammar, yeah, sure. Fluency, respondent, yeah. Pero, patay yung pronunciation delivery. Hindi pa rin tumakako ng mataas score. So, kailangan mong gamitin yung mga variation ng pronunciation, yung proper delivery, yung great enunciation, proper articulation, to all together para mas ma-improve mo yung presentation mo. So, a person who said that will not get a score more than six dahil patay ang ating pronunciation delivery. So, kailangan may emotions din. Kailangan meron siyang personal tone. It seems like I just talked to a robot at dapat ang kausap ko ay tao. So, it's so much better to answer the question, where do you live like this? My place of residence is located in Cabanatuan City, Nueva Ecija. Even though the place is not yet the capital city of my province anymore, this is still the center for business where many establishments such as banks, shops, and malls can be found. Hmm. Ganun lang. Tapos stop. Wait for further question kasi dun ka lang naman tinanong eh. Para kontrolado mo yung fluency. So does the person of the person hinder effective communication? So do you have some conditions? Like ako right now, I'm having difficulty pronouncing, exerting force with my voice. That's why I am using a wired headphones para mas malakas yung pick up ng sound. Kasi uh, meron ako sipon kagabi. But magaling naman na siya ngayon. But medyo ano lang, st- stuffed yung nose. Medyo hirap lang huminga yung right nostril ko. But yung left side okay naman. So we're still doing this. So if you have some conditions like you have sore throat, or medyo hindi maayos yung modulation ng voice. Okay? Medyo husky yung voice. Um, this will hinder effective communication, definitely. So, kailangan mo siya i-tweak. Right? Kailangan mo siya i-manipulate. Does the person put appropriate stress on words? Diba? Kevin, tell me about your most memorable childhood experience. Oh, I still remember. That was my seventh birthday. Diba? Ang ganda eh, nung stress eh. Oh, I still remember. That was on 7th birthday. Okay? I was so happy that time because my friends and family were there and we celebrated with clowns, with balloons, lots of food. My favorite foods were there, including pasta, spaghetti to be to be exact, uh, ice cream, mm, fried chicken, cake, all the kinds of sweets that you can think of were there. So, ganon. Kailangan meron kang stress sa yung speech. Kailangan din siya, I'm so happy on my seventh birthday. Come on. You don't seem like you're happy. Come, you have to convince me. All right. Do you have a glide? What do you mean by glide? Glide is one of the features of the American accent. So when you glide, it means minamadali mo yung pronunciation. Kasi ang mga Americans, lazy speaker yan. So when you watch NBA, when you watch any sports, Um, and in-interview yung mga NBA stars, mga English, mga American players. Kinakain nila words eh. Like Steph Curry, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, those are best examples. Like, hey LeBron, what can you say about the performance of your team tonight? Oh, I think we got some luck with some of the balls and then we take some shots and we run a play that calls, well, that's all to my teammates. They're, they're wonderfully good. Like, what the hell? I wasn't able to understand anything. Same with Durant, same with Curry. Actually, si Curry pinakapangit magpronounce sa lahat. Kasi kinakain nila words. That's, The American Glide. Okay, so si Glide, ang feature niyan, tulad niyan, yung want to, pinapabilis sa giging wanna. Yung going to, pinapabilis sa giging gonna. Okay? Yung yes, sa giging yeah. Yung because, sa giging cause. Uh, what else? Kung sumong sabihin na call him again. Ang American equivalent niyan eh, call him again. Call him again. Nakakain mo na yung in between the words. So wala na siyang proper pauses. So hindi rin maganda yon. Okay. Do they, do they maintain? Kayo yon. Do they maintain consistent volume throughout the conversation? So your volume must actually be stronger 
than your natural speaking voice. Kasi nga, yun nga, mamuffle siya ng, ng mask. So, kailangan natin siyang i- exert pa ng more effort. Does the voice quality hinder effective communication? Aminin na natin, uh, in our life, there are people who are gifted with beautiful voices. So, kailangan relaxed. Kailangan well-modulated ang ating voice. Kailangan hindi siya nasal. Kailangan hindi siya breathy. Kailangan you don't have to exert too much effort in trying to modulate it during the exam. Because kung pinapalaki mong pilit, pinapalimpis mong pilit ang boses mo, you have to exert more effort than the usual. And it would significantly impact, negatively impact your speech production. So pronunciation and delivery, for me, is a single most important. If I can place this in hierarchy, pronunciation delivery muna, tapos number two si fluency delivery, and or rather fluency and cohesion, tapos si vocab, and then last pa si grammar. Yeah, I have encountered students na ang, ang sasablay ng grammar nila, yet they were able to manage to convince the examiner they were trustworthy, they were interesting candidates, they were confident candidates, and they nailed the exam. That is what you also have to achieve in the process. Okay. So here is your speaking subtest overview. We have two types of answers. We have the personal answer. These are ideas coming more from personal experiences and opinions about the topic being discussed. There can only be one person here who knows all the things about yourself. And it's not me, it's you. That's why we don't teach you answers. We teach you how to answer because we want to also make sure that you would come off as genuine, as original as possible. Na parang ito lang din narinig ko ata sa YouTube, di ba? Kaya nga mostly pagka yung students ko, sinendon ko ng first speaking task, yun yung what is your favorite food? Ang introduction karamihan yan. Today, I'm going to talk to you about my favorite food, which is adobo. Diyos ko, wala nang kamatayang adobo. Lahat na lang adobo ang sagot. So, wala na bang iba? Diba? Sabi na examiner, this is the same shit over and over again. Come on. Be personal. Be yourself. Be real. Get original. Alright? So, you have to introduce the topics, the questions, the, the responses in a much more convincing yet less memorized way. So, kung ang tanong sa today, I'm going to talk to you about, today, I'm going to talk, you have to introduce less, ano, less, um, templated. So, limbawa, tell me about your favorite song. Simulan mo sa, I really love listening to music. And the one that I particularly like is, sabi mo yung song. Ba? Mostly, mga favorite songs yung mga airs of play, ano? Kasi tatandaan yun eh. Alright? So, hi, okay, char. <laughs> Joke lang yan. So, personal answers, lucky for us. 9.09er, Kabinaton Branch has compiled. Every possible question there is in the examination. So, we don't have to deal with that problem anymore. All we have to do is to make ourselves familiar. Ano ba ang mga tanong na maaring matanong sa exam? How can I possibly answer those questions easily? So, paano ko siya masasagot? Paano kung ito ang tanong sa akin? Paano kung tinanong ka, what is your favorite painting? Doon ka ba mararatel sa mismong exam? Doon ka ba kakabahan sa mismong exam? Dapat confident ka that whatever question the examiner asks you, you have answers to them. So, what if I don't? Then, gamitin mo yung pinagbabawal na technique na, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to your question. But here's what I'm going to do. As soon as I get home, I will do my research about it. So, pwede ka gawa ng sarili mong version. Like, unfortunately, right now, Mr. Examiner, my knowledge is incomplete with regard to this matter. So, what I'll do is, when I get home, I'll research about it and improve my knowledge in this topic. Thank you. Oh, di ba? Yun yung sarili kong version. So kayo, isip kayo ng sarili yung version kung tinanong ka ng examiner, why do you think the whole of a manhole is round? Why do you think that the base of the pyramid is square, but its sides are rectangles? <laughs> so, <laughs> or triangles. So no, uh, di ka naman tatanungin ng ganong sobrang hirap na tanong. But what if it comes? So kailangan meron ka na dyang click na button. Okse, tumitik ko na to na, na version. So, yung pangalawang answer natin is the intellectual answer. In this part, ideas here 
come from information learned from audiovisual sources, newspapers, books, magazines, and others, radio, television, internet. So mga tinatanong ka sa opinions mo sa mga nangyayari sa paligid, yung mga situations na nangyayari, kailangan at least, hindi ka man maging specialist sa mga yun, kailangan at least aware ka what is happening so that you may, you may be able to provide useful information to the examiner. So types of speech, obviously, memorize yung part one. Sa part one kasi, lahat ng tanong dyan, alam natin yung sagot. So you just have to let it lose, uh, but in a less obvious way. Extemporaneous speech is delivered with little preparation, usually with the help of some notes or an outline. So extemporaneous speaking, bibigyan ka na examiner ng time mag-prepare. Later, didiscuss siya mas, ng mas uh, mahaba. But si extemporaneous speaking, madali lang siya kasi may prep time. Now, si impromptu, this is what we call the off-the-cuff responses. You have to speak here immediately without time for preparations. Usually, in this part of the test, medyo challenging siya because more abstract ang mga nagiging questions. So, kailangan wag mo ipapakita na uh, naapektuhan yung composure mo just because you're finding it difficult to respond because you don't have an idea about the topic itself. So, next is mga types of speech natin. We have the informative speech tend to be full of facts but also boring. So, kailangan gawin mong fun way yung pagbibigay mo ng information. Persuasive is one of the hardest to deliver. NC demonstrations serve as a very powerful instructional technique. Example, Kevin, tell me about a piece of equipment from home. Well, there's one in particular that I would like to tell you about, and that would be my electric fan. So an electric fan, as the name implies, is a fan that produces wind that runs through electricity. So first, I have to plug the socket. Mostly in the Philippines, the voltage is between 100 to 220. So afterwards, I just have to press the buttons with zero that switches the machine off, one, the least amount of wind, two, average, and three, the strongest produced air that comes to the electric fan. So that is the piece of equipment that I would like to discuss to you from home. Oh, see? Yeah. So you have to demonstrate the, the idea in that way. Kailangan mo siya i-deliver. Parang, oh, electric fan lang pala. Diba? So explain mo lang siya. So kailangan kalmado. Kailangan ibigay mo lang yung info. Demonstrate mo siya how it functions. So... We can move on sa tips. Now, confidence is the key when learning how to think on your feet. Now, I'm someone na hindi masyadong confident. Yeah, I'm actually telling the truth. I would like to just be alone in my room, do my thing. But since ito ang aking work, I have to appear confident in front of everyone, which mostly hindi naman ako masyado talaga nakikahalubilo sa mga tao. But what I want to mention is I, I know a thing or two how to appear confident. So first, there is no one here for the entire planet who will be with you from the moment you're born until you die. Not even God because God is just a conscience, is a being that doesn't um, interfere so much with uh, human lives. But yeah, we have different views with God. So let's not dig in deeper with the philosophical stuff right there. But the thing is, it's you. It's not your mom, it's not your dad, it's not your significant other, but it's you who knows everything about you, even how to make yourself confident. So, example, you will notice most uh, athletes uh, na inspired sila or sila ay confident tingnan. Pero meron din silang tinatawag na mga external factors. Tulad yan, mga nakikinig sila ng mga Rock music, imagine yung mga wrestlers or boxers, mga UFC fighters sa papasok sa ring, meron silang sariling song na pini, pin, pinili nila para patutugin. It gives them the the pump, it gives them the hype that they need. So ako, whenever you guys see me before I do the class, I will play Post Malone songs, I'll play Eminem raps. It gives me the pump, it gives me the vibe. Before I do that, I do exercise. So exercising in the morning, especially playing basketball or sometimes boxing in the afternoon gives me my confidence boost that ah you know this is my adrenaline kasi adrenaline at saka yung endorphin na nasa body natin hormones again we're talking about some biological stuff na can actually increase your happiness level 
which can make you more confident. Kasi yun yun eh, di ba? So, pag masyado kang stress, masyado mo kang anxious, oh, ano nga nangyari sa exam ko, kaya ko sagutin to lahat. You're just pulling yourself down, dude. Come on. You have to be the one to pick yourself up. Not be the one to hold yourself down. So, you have to be the one to play your own game. Ask yourself, hey, how can we become confident? Do we have to wear red? Do we have to put a coin in my shoe? Diba? So, sir, ba kailangan ko ata 10 piso dahil 10 pisong tigi, tigpi piso. Sobrang kaba ko kasi. <laughs> Gawin mo, higay. Alam problema. Lagyan mo ng limandaam tigpi piso. Alam problema sa akin. Basta kung yun ang natatanging paraan para mas maging confident ka, then go! Diba? Nothing is stopping you from from doing that. So, you have to know yourself better. You have to know who you are para mas maintindihan natin how can we possibly make sure that when we take this exam, we're doing this right. And the first step is for you to become confident. So, relax. Because when you are relaxed, you'll be able to modulate your voice better. You'll be able to think more clearly. So, it requires your brain, this is required for your brain to think. Take deep breaths. So, inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. But be careful. All right? Because examiners, we don't want to give them bad experience. So please brush your teeth the day on your exam. Because sabi exam, oh, what's that? Is there a dead cat nearby? Okay? Nung pagka-exhale mo. So syempre, pagpasok mo, take three long, deep breaths. All right? Give yourself a positive, affirming message. Sometimes, di sa mga pressers, talagang tumatalang talagang sila, hey, you can do it. Kakabugi nila yung dibdib nila for like three times. Bang, bang, bang. So you do that. It's okay. Alright? Um, and then, patigasin mo yung mga muscles mo. I-contract I- mo siya lahat. Like, every muscle in your body, contract them for like five seconds and then, let go. <sighs> Mas relax yan. Okay. I'm actually doing this right now. Okay? So lahat nung ginagawa ko, not na to, habang dinidus na ginagawa ko siya ngayon. Because I practice what I preach. So listen, this is really critical. Uh, to thinking on your feet. Make sure that you fully understand the question before you respond. Focus on the examiner. Try to interpret what is being suggested by the question. That's the implication. What does the question hint? What does the question want from us? Remember that the person is asking a question because that person is either interested in you positively because they want to know more or the person is interested with you negatively they want to see you squirm. Either way, you want to make sure that we know how to respond well with different types of questions. Have the question repeated. I already told you how you can ask the examiner to repeat the question for you because it actually makes you concerned about giving appropriate response. So, ang dating ng nagpapaulit ng tanong sa kanila is um, concern ka na maitama ang sagot, which is hindi nila alam, talagang din ang, talaga natin narinig. Okay. So, courtesy matters. All right? So, you have to sound polite in this instance. Use stall tactics. So what is stall tactics? Stall tactics are actually background statements to your advantage. We don't just blurt out the first things that come to our mind. Like, what's your favorite color? Red. What's your favorite movie? Uh, um, Titanic. What's your favorite book? Uh, uh, the Bible. Mm. Diba? So anun dapat natin gawin? Kagamit ka ng background statements. For example, what is your favorite color? The color that I like the most is red. What is your favorite book? Well, there are actually many books that I'm reading right now, but the one that I keep on constantly repeating myself to read over and over again is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. So that's it. Kailangan buong pangungusap. So yun yung background statement. So may iba-iba tayong way para magbigay ng background statement. So sa namin nating stall tactics, yun yung paunang salita. Matandaan na hindi tayo nagpapaligoy-ligoy. Gusto lang natin, kumbaga sa lumpia, Ibalot sa wrapper yung laman ng lumpia. Dahil kapag pinirito mo yung laman ng lumpia na walang wrapper, sa bugyon, hindi siya masarap tingnan, hindi siya masarap kainin. Kailangan meron siya. Ayan, ako, just ka nagutom ako sa lumpia. So, mag- ah, pabili ka ng lumpia. Alright, All right. so, that's the thing. Kailangan lang natin siyang i-envelope sa isang statement na para mas maibigay mo siya yung answer mo directly. Okay, yung first statement is always the direct response to the examiner. 
Again, bawal din po ang repetition. What's your favorite color? Favorite color is, what is your name? My name is, where do you live? I live in. So if you will be using those um, sentences made by the examiners, they will think na pinaparot mo sila. Alam niyo parot, yung paulit-ulit na, ay, pangit mo, pangit mo, ay, pangit mo, pangit mo. So paulit-ulit siyang ganun. So parang ginagaya mo siya and it's annoying for them. Kailangan mo mag-come up ng sarili mo. Like, what is your favorite food? The food that I like the most is, what's your favorite restaurant? Well, I've visited a lot of restaurants, but Yellow Cab for me is the best. Oh, diba? That's another way of answering it. Mm-hmm. So, ganyan yung small tactics na tinatawag. Yun yung background statements na tinatawag. Now, stick to one point and one supporting piece of information. There's a tendency kasi that you would either answer with few or more information than expected. So, kailangan natin siyang i-focus into just one single piece of information. Ito yung answer ko. Kung ang tanong niya is where, gamitin mo yung directional techniques na tinuro natin sa common mistakes in IELTS. Kung ang tanong niya ay when, syempre gagamit ka ng mga time. So, be careful with grammar. Kapag naman tinanong niya ay how, you have to tell the examiner the step-by-step -step process. So, mas okay gamitin naman yung isang technique doon. Diba? So, we, we use different techniques in the speaking test to provide answers much more skillfully. Practice clear delivery. How you say something is as important as what you say. If you mumble or use um or a ah between every other word, confidence in what you're saying plummets. Speak in a strong voice. Kailangan, you have to sound confident. Hi, my name is Kevin Mohalabnan. Please call me Kevin for short. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Examiner. Mm. Vary your tone. Use pauses strategically. The color that I like the most in particular is crimson. The reason why I like this color a lot is because it reminds me of compassion. Oh, di ba ganun lang? Ganun mo siyang i-discuss. Vary your tone. Pay attention to your message. Use eye-to-eye -eye contact appropriately. Yung eye contact na nag establish ng rapport and trust. Wag yung eye contact na nanay mo nagpapabili ka ng laruan sa mall, tapos pinandilatan ka niya ng mata. Okay? So, hindi yung glaring, ha? Don't stare, don't glare, just glance. Okay. Pay attention to your grammar and use the appropriate level of formality. We're trying to make friends with a stranger here. And we want to convince this stranger that we are an interesting person. So, we have to sound like one. That is the challenge. So, if given a camera, uh, chance, summarize and stop. That is why red is my favorite color. And then wait for further questions. So, know how to organize your speech. Know your topic. What is the question about? What is its implication? Organize your speech. So, into your introduction. That is the main response. Body, pwede ako mag-mention ng mga reasons dito. Pwede ako mag-explain ng mga different types of analogies, pwede ako magdala ng subpoints, magbigay ng example, and then pwede ko siyang isummarize again. And with style, of course. So, 10 tips for accent neutralization. No to American, British, or Australian accent. We are only training you guys with accent for the purpose of listening skills, but not for the speaking test itself. Kasi ang dapat sa speaking test is neutral po ang accent natin. Neutral. Not center, not center, but center. Okay. Proper pronunciation symbols are required. So, observe mouth movements of native speakers. You will be seeing them manipulating their articulators a lot. And that would actually help us in enunciating the words. Until you learn the rhythm of English, slow down your speech. If you allow yourself to slow down, it would actually give you two positive effects. One is it gives you better pronunciation. It gives you better control. And the other is you can buy yourself some time in thinking what words are you going to come up with next what answers are you going to what details are you going to provide next so listen to the music of english all right not rap music because rap music like mga mumble so you don't do that huh all right use your dictionary uh, make a list of frequently used words that are difficult for you to pronounce and ask a native speaker to pronounce it them for you so 
practice din natin yung mga tongue twisters sa pinrovide natin for your pronunciation classes. This would actually be a big help. Buy books or movies and tape and CD. Alright, wakay masadong mamirata mga taon to, no? Buy buy on Amazon. Pay them using Netflix. Alright, pronounce the ending of each word. Pronounce the ending of each word. Di ba? That sounds much clearer. Okay. Read aloud in English 15 to 20 minutes each day. Record your own voice and listen for pronunciation mistakes. This is actually one of the reasons why whenever we do uh, speaking practices, nire-record natin siya para mabalikan mo. Nga, no? Ang pangit pala ang boses ko. Eh, totoo, actually, ang pangit ng boses ko. None of my videos or recording, I don't listen to them. I don't watch them again because my voice sucks. Parang boses kiki, bas parang boses... Animal, eh, 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 ganun yung dating eh. So, eh, I cringe when I listen to it. And be patient. Be patient because growth, improvement, development, skills enhancement does not come overnight. This is something that you should work on entirely. So you should be patient with yourself. You don't have to be too hard on yourself, dude. One point at a time. Hindi natin pwedeng pilitin na lumago ang isang halaman, it has to wait. We have to wait for it to grow. But as we wait for it to grow, we nurture it. We learn. We practice. So once it grows, it will grow beautifully. Wow. All right. So welcome to Philosophy 101. Okay. So tuloy tayo. Task 1. This is the start of your IELTS examination. Sa haba-haba ng discussion ko, task 1 pa lang pala tayo. Now, I'll be looking at the time. See, ipopost ko muna ito para mas madali siyang i-upload by batch. Kasi if it will be uploaded as an hour, it would become more difficult for me to upload that dun sa aking drive. So, post muna natin ito. Uh, 